even though I only played playing this for a week and a half, on and off. But since Pokemon Go is very slow on their updates, and this game came out with a few patches here and there, why not try it out? So currently I've been playing this with my Pokemon Plus for Pokemon Go and then playing this actively on my phone, unless I go out to take gyms. Um, of course the game itself is, oh look, some monsters. The game itself is a clone of Pokemon Go and yet it has way more to offer. In regards to Pokemon Go, you go around hunting monsters all the same. That Pokestop's called Pillar of Abundance. Uh, here's one right there, if I can click on it. Too far. Pretty much work the same way as Pokestops. And they have the gym right here, which is the same as the old gym system where you can prestige it up and you collect coins based on how much you captured. And there's a cooldown time, uh, so every, one, every 21 hours or so. They also have cocoons, which technically are eggs. They have two types of eggs here, though. They don't have raids in this game, obviously, as that's a new feature in Pokemon Go this summer. But it's still pretty good. It has some other things that which I will go over right now. So let's go over some of the differences. So compared to Pokemon Go, though, there aren't really any wild spawns in this game that I noticed. They're mostly usually near Pillar, an arena, an obelisk, a library, a portal, or a mother dragon. Fortunately, there are a bunch of those everywhere. But even with that, the rate is still a bit slow. The tracker is similar to current Pokemon Go where it takes you to where the, it's near a specific location. But then locating a monster can be a little difficult because the range is pretty long. So it just gives you a proximity of where it is on those locations you get to like a pillar or an arena even though you're exactly on the spot it could be a little bit further out to actually see it so you probably have to wander around so it gets it does get a little bit annoying when that spot is on someone's backyard so you can only reach it from the other side of the street or there's not even a street over there the balls this game is heavier than the balls you used in, to in Pokemon Go. The curveball seemed almost impossible to hit if they're super far away. Not sure if the velocity of the ball is lost as it goes into a torque of the throw. Good thing though, you can still hit with the standard way, which is just throwing it straight at it. The monster attack quite often compared to Pokemon Go, but other than that, it's pretty much the same, except with a more vibrant background. Now for the monster screen, they have IVs on the monster, of strength and health, one being the lowest and five being the highest. The moves list the energy per second and the damage per second, so you don't actually need to manually calculate them or go Google it somewhere. And everything else is pretty much just the same. The game does a great job at spreading out all the in-game locations pretty evenly all over the place here. It doesn't base it on actual landmark, which is kind of a pros and cons as you're restricted to the amount of landmarks. So it works. this works well with the rural areas. However, it can be placed in the most random place ever. Like in a lot of areas that are not accessible to the public. There are a couple of different types of in-game locations. As I mentioned before, there's the Pillar of Abundance, and which is almost the same as Pokestop and Arena, which is pretty much the gyms, the old system. Except there's actually a tier base based on the league, which is also based on the level that you're at that puts you in the Pacific League. So in, if you're below level 15, you only see arenas within your league. So once you hit level 15, you get kicked off everything and then you, you're now in the Silver League levels. So you'll be only able to interact with other Silver Leaguers at arenas and libraries. Let's say, for example, there is one person at that arena and if you aren't in the same league as you, you will see it as unclaimed. So there are four other types I want to talk about. The first one is the obelisk. So you can get to the obelisk. You can require a quest, in which you complete to get like an interesting prize. I already have one in progress, but so far I received a cooldown acceleration of five hours from my tax collection, you know, collecting from the arenas, the coins, and library retraining time reduced by eight hours. Um, so far it only decreased it once. So for example, once you have the cooldown of the 5 hours off right and then you collect, it is back to the original 21 hour cooldown. 
You can also hold the quest as long as you want. Um, you can, but you can't change the quest unless you had you wait twenty one hours since you got the quest. Um, so if you also completed it within the twenty one hour wait time, then you still have to finish waiting until that twenty one hours completed. There's also another tab here, which is used for the golden egg hunt, which I will go over later. And here's the clip of which I got another prize, a recipe for completing a quest. The next one is the library, which seems to take about 120 hours to complete for retraining. I think in the past it was 72 and then 90 and now it's 5 days. The more libraries you take over, the faster the time will go. So when you finish retraining, you can come to the capture menu and then click the retrain button. You then select the monster and then you select the move that you want to retrain, which is technically like TM in Pokemon. But after you retrain, the timer will start in which you have a three day cooldown before you can actually retrain or have anything to do with libraries again. All right, there's one final in-game location I want to talk about and it's the portal. You can go there and then you can enter a rift. It creates an 800 by 800 meter area in which it acts like a safari zone which only spawns arcana monsters. This area appears to be pink and it creates way more pillars within the rift, which in turn gives you more spawns. Sometimes there may or may not be this special in-game location called the Mother of Dragons. So from time to time you get these ancient eggs, right, which are time-based. 2 hours, 5 hours, 10 hours, and these can only be hatched by giving into the mother dragon. So I'm at this portal, let's see, there's no mother dragons here. Alright, well, let's go to another one. Here I am at another portal. It's the portal. Can you reach it? I'm in here now. I'm too far. Can I walk up here? Did the alarm go off? Yes, I'm in. Alright, is there a mother of dragons? <gasps> right here. What the fudge? Right here. Alright, mother of dragons. Get these ancient eggs. You can put one in here. Ooh, I think I should put 10k in here. Oh, 10 hours. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put one per dragon unless you get the artifact. Oh. Look at all these arcanas. Alright, let's head out. Also, if, you, if the mother dragon disappears, the portal disappears with a mother dragon hat where you're putting your egg, the time will just stop. Even if it's right here. So I now gotta find another portal and find another mother dragon to give this 10 hour egg to. Alright, so the golden egg hunt can start once you get to an obelisk and receive your first map fragment, which indicates where the golden egg is located in a 3x3 tile map. The location will be roughly 1 or 2 miles from the place where you got your first map fragment. And it works well if you can do the group, because you can get parts of the map and try to make sense of the area of what you have and what the other person has and the, the way it works is that you have to go to different obelisks to collect different and more map fragments to make your map and it seems like it happened the hunt happens weekly so one time I started near the end of the week and I only had 17 hours to complete it and then I finished that the same day and then the next day I started another one and it said I had seven days to complete it so the way I do is first I define any changing patterns or features of the map because it doesn't have any pillars or arenas on it unfortunately so you got to do it based on the pattern of the roads and stuff. And then I use Google Maps or Jim Hunter from Pokemon Go to help me pinpoint the location based on that feature. So once you find it you can get over there to the location and then if you go to your quest and hunt tab the map one of the tiles will be highlighted yellow of the map that you're actually in. You will then use the item shuffle to dig that highlighted area. It will let you know if you find the egg or not. If it's not there, the map you have dug will be striked out. Then you go to another section of the map and you continue to keep digging until you find it. Also, another note, if your group gets the same fragment the first time at the same obelisk, 
around the same time as you, you should be on the same golden egg hunt. In which you can take turns to dig shovels as they're hard to come by, usually just from leveling. So far, the reward from the hunt that I got is the golden egg, which contains a very rare monster. Here we go, wild encounter. Ramney, in the overview world map, you get attacked by a wild monster. And here we go. Oh, toy. I'll use my strong, eh, this one's stronger. In terms of attack power. Okay, oh. He gets Ruin, XP, Essence. Also in this game, there's PvP, player versus player. You get three tries every day, and it's easier to show you than tell you. Let's speed it up. Look at that synergy. I have a quest, element hunt, travel, and capture creatures of earth element. And from the quest that I finished earlier for fire element, I got a recipe for the tower earth. So I'm gonna, first time using a recipe and an altar, let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh, that, that, I guess it goes directly on me. Face ruin to cast a spell. All right. Me, me. Hey, people can help me. Hold on a second. Oh my god, what the hell is that? A freaking giant egg. So there's one more thing, which is the artifacts. When you go to the shop, you can see your artifacts here. They cost about 3000 or 5000 It's pretty much like equipment for your character. To equip one, you go to your character icon. You click on your character. It'll take you to this page, right? You can only put nine of them at once. I don't have any right now, unfortunately. But yeah, so this is the last thing. I do want to go over attributes, like which one's strong against the other or moves maybe. Maybe in different videos, so maybe you can like subscribe and maybe like this video, you find this helpful. If I'm missing anything, let me know. Um, I guess that's it. Later days. Oh yeah, don't forget about this.